Lemos and I am the director. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight and support the drama class. We are definitely really happy to see you. This is great. What an awesome audience. We had a great turnout last night, over 200, and a pretty big audience tonight as well, so thank you. So enjoy the show. Olivia. I have sent declarations of my intentions, gifts, but she refuses them all without the courtesy of a response. How now, Valentine? What news from her? I regret, my lord, that I was not admitted, but the countess do return with this answer. Say 
stayed that way for a long time. But on New Year's Day, we were struck by a storm that rocked the island. Ingenious plan, we will try. 
to him. Taking pity on her, the captain swore to help her, and our little island would never be the same again. serve a nobleman more loyal and constant. Cesario. On your attendance, my lord, here. Excuse us, good Valentine. Cesario, you know no less but all. I have unclapsed to you the book of my secret soul. For these past 10 years, I have lived to serve the will of my late father in all things the continuance of his business, the maintenance of his estate, and the governance of this fair island. Now, my friend, it is time for me to take a wife, and there is no person on this island equal to my wealth and standing than the Countess Olivia. Take this message to Olivia. Do not be denied access. Tell them you must have audience. My noble lord, she is abandoned in her sorrow. She never will admit me. Be clamorous. Leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Reveal to her the passion of my love. Your youthful features and smooth appearance are right out for this affair. Succeed in this, and you may call my fortunes yours. I will do my best to woo your lady. With Cesario by my side, Olivia yet shall be my bride. I me, what strife? How shall I woo when I yearn to be his wife? people, it's another beautiful day in Illyria. Time to wake up our bodies and greet the sunrise. Alarm clock rings, you're up with the sun. Throw on your sneakers and go out for a run. You start to smile as you hit that second turn. Second turn, second turn. Then Tai Chi and yoga to work up a sweat. All of this and you have not had breakfast yet. You're in the zone, you can feel the burn. You balance out your proteins and your carbohydrates and it's off to the gym to start lifting weights. You start to feel that strength for which you No pain, no gain. Feel the burn. Feel the burn, feel the burn, feel the burn, feel the burn. By all that holy lady belch, sunrise and you're just coming home. You must come in early or night. Your niece, the Countess Olivia, takes great exception to your late hours. Oh, mercy, my niece. The Countess Dracula. Why does she take the death of a brother so deeply to heart? It's not healthy. Stress is an enemy to life. 
been looking for you all morning long. I know you spent every night carousing with this one. Look here, Maria. For as long as I'm visiting, Fabiana will be my maid, and she'll keep me company if I choose. Besides, I've taken the child under my wing as my protege, as a world renowned grand dame of the stage. I have an obligation to nurture talent whenever I find it. And this child is gifted, I tell you. Fabiana, you lazy girl, go to the Countess before she has you hung for your absence. Let her hang me. As Lady Belch says, many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. Excellent, Fabiana. Such a quick study. And speaking of marriage, what is this talk I hear of a foolish knight that you have brought in to woo and wed the Countess? Who? Sir Andrew Acucci? I, he. Maria, it's obvious my niece is incapable of running things by herself. She needs a husband. He's single and he's a millionaire. <laughs> The man's a fool, and those millions won't last in a week with your head in his wallet. Slander up! He speaks three or four languages, word for word, without a book. <laughs> oh, yes, but he speaks them all at the same time. His dialect is nearly unintelligible. What country is he from? Oh, you know. She be as four to one shall none of me. The Duke himself has been sending messengers to court her. She's not interested in the Duke. I've heard her swear. Come now, this life and his men have faith. I'll stay a month longer. But wooing is an expensive business. Love is best expressed with gifts. Say it with flowers. <laughs> As to my niece, put your best foot forward. It is a world of high preach rich you is in. Let's be see what
I should have gone into the convent instead of into service. It would have been more merry. At least none sing. Do you remember last year, Carmen? The holidays were so festive. The decorations, the music. Those were happier days when the young Count was alive. I want parties. I want dancing. You have a job in a fine household, Anita. Be grateful for that. The Countess is a great lady, but the house is so bleak since her brother died. Take pity, girls. It's a world of care that the Countess has taken upon her young shoulders. Oh, enough! You live to torture me, Fessy. I know you do. Girls, take this fool away. Did you hear her, girls? Take away the Countess. I beg your pardon. You ordered them to take away the fool. Therefore, I say, take the Countess away. <laughs> Fessy, I ordered them to take you away. Madam, give me leave to prove that you are the fool. Can you do it? Make your proof. Good madam, why do you mourn? Foolish girl, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, madam. I know his soul is in heaven. The more fool you. You turn your back on your affairs, neglect your estate, and lock yourself away from the world and the people who love you. All to mourn for a brother whose soul lives in heaven? Ladies, take away the fool. Malvolio! Yes, my lady. Is she right? Is my grief for my brother excessive? I marvel, your ladyship. It pays any mind to such a rascal. For one of your ladyship to be upbraided by this puerile philosopher, this beach vagabond? Pardon me for being so bold, ma'am, but the insult is intolerable. What girl? No witty retort? Well, there you have it. The fool is gagged. Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. <laughs> oh, you are sick with self-love, Malvolio. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. There is a young gentleman at the door who much desires to speak with you. Oh, Lord. Another messenger from Duke Orsino, is it? I told him you were asleep. It takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were sick. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He is fortified against any denial. What manner of man is he? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you. Will you or no? Of what personage in years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. I'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. Are you the honorable lady of the house? I shall answer for her, your will. Good lady, I bring greetings from Duke Orsino. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. Enough, boy. Be brief. Good madam, let me see your face. Now you are out of your text, but I will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. It is in grain, sir. It will endure wind and weather. I see you for what you are. You are too proud, but if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. How does he love me? With adorations, with fertile tears, with groans that thunder love and sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. But madam, he is virtuous, noble, of great estate, a fresh and stainless youth, learned and valiant, and in the shape of nature, manly and handsome and a gracious person. <sighs> I still cannot love him. He might have taken this answer long ago. If I did love you and my master's flame was such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial, I'd find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Tell me, boy, how would you love? <laughs> Free my love would 
Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. Tell him to sin no more, unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Farewell. Farewell, fair cruelty. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn you are. This youth, with an invisible and subtle stealth, Creeping at my eyes. Malvolio! Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the Duke's man. He left this ring behind. Tell him I'll have none of it. I am not for him. Madam, I will. There, being a gentleman, he must come back and return the ring. I do, I know not what! Even now, with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to take it away yourself. Receive it so. She took no ring of me, all none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside has not charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed so much that I thought her eyes had lost her tongue. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me back with the offer of this ring. Countess Olivia is in love, and I am the man. Poor lady, she were better love a dream. 
The skies, I see, you are a wickedness. Oh, time, you must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Will you stay no longer? You saved my life, Antonio. And none of your good wife's care, my health has been restored. I will burden you no longer. Oh, how pale you look. Look at him, husband. The life in you has scarcely been rekindled, and you will away? Good woman, I must. Well then, we shall go with you. Could, Juliana, no. My star shine darkly over me. It would be a bad recompense for your love if my ill fortune should fall on you. But where are you bound? My father, Sebastian Amezlin, whom I know you have heard of, left behind him, myself, and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, we had so ended. But you, Antonio, and your kind wife, and all the good crew of your pirate band, you altered that. For some hour before you rescued me from the breach of the sea, so my sister drowned. Alas, the day, poor lad. A lady, ma'am, though it said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. She has drowned already, sir, with salt water, and you drown her remembrance again with more. Farewell. I am bound to Duke Orsino's court. He may be generous and help me find my way home to Mezzaline. Gentle cease to you all. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with you. I have many enemies in Duke Orsino's court, else I would shortly see you there. <laughs> Come on what may, we cannot let that bereft lad venture forth alone. But good wife, the Duke's men should discover us. Danger shall seem sport. We go. We go. <laughs> Shipwrecks, separated twins, disguises, mismatched lovers, and pirates. And didn't I tell you this was some party? But things really started to heat up just three nights ago, when Lady Tamara threw a big bash at her niece's estate. Come, oh, friends! You can't be sleepy yet! It's just a little after midnight. It's a new morning. And to spend the morning in bed is to waste the best part of the day. Maestro, here's to you and the band. Let's have a song of good life. A song for Twelfth Night.
Our New Year's party still goes on. My resolutions are all gone. Come on, girls, and come on, boys. Celebrate and make some noise. Slam that door, let's hit the floor. Let's do the 12 night song. Stop, stop, stop. Medicine will work on him. 
Come, girls, for this night to bed and dream of the event. Good night, my lady. Good night, sweet goddess of mischief. <laughs> That's a good wench. She's so remarkably useful. I adore that woman's cleverness. I was adored once too. A grand fromage of my country. But her parents said, oh no, that's Sir Andrew. He's not a grand fromage at all. He is a cheese doodle. I never saw her again. Lady Tamara, if I cannot marry your niece... If you have her, not in the end, trust me not. If I do not trust you, never trust me. But wooing is an expensive business. <laughs> If ever you love in the sweet pangs of it, remember me, such as I am all true lovers are, fixed on the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How do you like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. You speak like a poet. My life upon it, young though you are, your eyes have stared upon some face that it loves. Has it not, boy? A little. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion, my lord. She is not worthy of you, then. What years? About your years, my lord. Too old, by heaven. You should let your love be younger than yourself. Once more, good Cesario, get yourself to that cruel Countess Olivia. Tell her of my love, more noble than the world. But if she cannot love you, sir? I cannot be so answered. But you must. Cesario, friends, please. I shall let you delay me no longer. I go to the lady. Aye, that's the way. To her in haste, my love can buy no denial. that she regards me with more respect than anyone else that follows her. Uh, to be Count Malvolio. That rogue! Pistol with it! Bada boom! Bada bee! Peace! Peace! There is example for it. The Duchess of the neighboring island married her groundskeeper. Uh, to be the husband of the Countess Olivia. Now this is just nasty. <laughs> Seated by my lady's side, I would send my servant to fetch my kinsman, Lady Tamara. Oh, for a slate shot to hit him in the shh! As she curtsies low to me, I say to her, Cousin Tamara, you must amend your irresponsible and immoral behavior. Show this fellow Is anyone there? <laughs> what have we here? Oh, God, please inspire him to read aloud. <laughs> By my life, this is my lady's handwriting. These are her very C's, her U's, and her T's. 
and thus she makes her great peas. It is without question her hand. To my secret beloved, I leave this letter and my good wishes. To whom has she written a love letter? He's on the hook! <laughs> Heaven knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. I must know! I must! I may command where I adore, but my position compels me to keep silent. But in my heart, I know. M-O-A-I, just swim my life. Ooh, a riddle! Excellent! M, Malvolio. Why, that begins my name. M-O-A-I. Every one of those letters are in my name. If this fall into your hand, revolve. <laughs> and both birth and fortune, I am above you. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Prove yourself worthy to be my love. Display yourself like a worthy lord of my estate by embracing the fashion of the times. Rem remember how I admired your yellow stockings and wished to see you ever cross guarded I say, remember, you are made a nobleman if you desire to be so. If not, let me see you still a servant, not worthy enough to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell. She that will link her destiny with yours. Oh. My lady loves me! I thank the stars I am happy! Heaven, my stars be praised! Wait, a postscript. Yes! A postscript! <laughs> if you love me as I do you, let it appear in your smiling. Your smiles become you well. Heaven, I thank you! I will smile! that I prepare for a very special guest this evening. A guest? Being entertained here? In this mausoleum? Who is the guest, Maria? Given the lavish preparations, I expect that it must be some visiting dignitary. There's much to do. Excuse me, my lady. Come, Fabiana, until we see the fruits of our sport, we must not let Malvolio out of our sight. I have much to learn from this clever housekeeper. <laughs> the gods smile on the brave. I will wait no longer. Tonight is the night I will declare my love for Olivia. and most humble service. Oh, my manners. I never asked you. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair lady. My servant, sir. You are servant to Duke Orsino, youth. And he is yours, madam. Oh, him. I think not on him. As for his thoughts, they were blanks then filled with me. Good lady, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. After the last enchantment you did here, I sent a ring in chase of you. And I have come to return it. I return the ring as I cannot return your affection in kind. Oh, how apt the poor are to be proud. Do not be afraid, good youth. I will not have you. There lies your way, due west. Then westward ho, priest attend your ladyship. Stay, fair youth, I love you. You do not know me. I am not what I am. Love me. I pity you. Pity? Well, that's something like love. Not true. A man often pities his enemies. Oh, even scorn looks beautiful on the contempt and anger of your lip. Cesario, I love you so that neither all my passion nor pride nor wit nor 
reason can my passion hide? Hit it. I was living in darkness. to my life and filled it up with light. I can't hide it any longer. It's time my love was shown. Because you're like no man I've ever known. Good madam. Love given sought is good, but love given unsought is better. need to accompany me? We cannot stay behind you, sir. We feared for your safety. My kind friends, I can make no other answer but thanks. I am not weary, and it's long till night. Let us walk about and satisfy our eyes with the things of fame that do renown this city. Pardon me, Sebastian, but it is dangerous for us to walk these streets. One side did the Duke some mischief. If I were captured in this place, I would pay for it with my freedom. You raided the island? You slew a great number of his people? The offense is not of such a bloody nature. Antonio was one of the Duke's accountants. He stole the receipts from the slot machines. $50,000. In quarters. 
we had to stuff them in all these little bitty coin wrappers. And so, thus began my life as a pirate. Do not I then walk to this place. Open. I shall pay for it with my freedom. Do not then walk to open. Sebastian, here's our purse. At the local inn, it is best to lodge. We will secure a room while you beguile the time and view the town. There shall you find us. Why do you give me your purse? Perhaps you shall find some fitter garment you have desired to purchase. My thanks. I accept your generous loan. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. Meet me at the inn. I do remember. I'll not stay an hour longer. Your reason, dear Sir Andrew, give your reason. I want to declare my love for your niece last night. She did more favors to the Duke's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. She showed favor to the youth in your sight, only to awaken your courage, to put fire in your heart. She wanted you to fight for her, and you balked. You must redeem yourself by some loyal act of valor. You must challenge the Duke's man and fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. It is the only honorable way, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, Sir Andrew, and prepare for battle. We will deliver your challenge away. <laughs> oh, this will be great fun. But we must take care. I wouldn't want Sir Andrew to be stabbed in his lovely, handsome Italian wallet. Malvolio is turned madman. If you desire to laugh yourself sick, watch his approach to my lady. He is coming to her in yellow stockings, a color of which she abhors. cross guarded a style which she deplores, dressed in the fashion of the times which she detests and he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it will turn him into an object of her contempt. Oh, there's my niece. Maria, have you seen Malvolio? Madam, have you seen Malvolio? I beg your pardon? Your steward is behaving in a very strange manner, my lady. I think he is possessed. Possessed? Maria, what a ridiculous notion. Sweet lady. Yo ho, yo ho. Spirit is light, my lady. <laughs> Maria, what is wrong with him? I don't know, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best not to be alone with him. For sure, he is tainted in his wits. <laughs> what ails you, Malvolio? Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. It was well written. What do you mean by that? Some are born great. What? Some achieve greatness. Malvolio, what are you saying? Remember who commended your yellow stockings? Your yellow stockings? Why, this is very midsummer madness! Madam, the young gentleman of Duke Orsino is returned. Pay attention, let it pleasure. I'll come to him. Maria, have this fellow look to. Take special care of him. Which way is he? If all the devils of hell possess him, yet I'll speak to him. Go off! I discard you! Let me enjoy my privacy! Go off! A fiend speaks rather than him, him. Did I not tell you he was possessed? How do you, Malvolio? Come, man, defy the devil. Silence! Foolish woman. You see, he speak ill of the devil, he takes it at heart. Merciful God, he's bewitched. Oh, Lord, protect us. Get him to say his prayers, Lady Tamro. Get him to pray. My prayers, Meeks. Keep your prayers. 
Mark that. He will not speak of godliness. Lady Tamara, the Countess ordered that you take special care of him. Oh? Oh! Yes, she does. I, and I heard her myself, and you would all be wise to obey. Peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. Girls, take him to the cellars and have him bound. Make him, he does himself no injury. Go hang yourselves all, your idle, shallow things. I am no longer of your element. My lady love shall hear of this. <laughs> if this are played upon the stage, I would condemn it as an improbable fiction. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. Let us pursue our pleasure and his penance a while longer. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be quieter. Maria, away and cease the madman. Come, Fabiana, we must deliver Sir Andrew's challenge to the Duke's serving man.
This comes from seeking you, but there is no remedy. I shall answer. Necessity makes me ask you for my purse. I shall need to post a bail. Come, sir, away! We must beg you return some of our money. What money, ma'am? For the kindness you have shown me, here. I'll lend you something. I haven't much, but I'll give you half. Will you deny us now, after all we have done for you? This sheet you see before you, we snatched one half out of the jaws of death. What's that to me? This time goes by! Away! You have, Sebastian, done your good feature shame by being unkind. Sebastian? They named Sebastian! Oh, if it prove, tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love. That dishonest boy! That coward! He abandons his friends in his need and denies knowledge of him? A coward! A most devout coward! The rogue should be beaten! Then after him, Sir Andrew, and cuff him soundly! I dare lay any money. No good will come of this. <laughs> will you make me believe that I am not sent for you? Peace, you are a foolish girl. Just let me be. <laughs> sure, I don't know you. It's okay, we've never met. I am not sent to you to bid you come speak with the Countess. Your name is not Master Cesario. This is not my nose, either. Nothing that is so is so. I beseech you, vent your folly somewhere else. You know not me. Vent <laughs> my folly? Vent my folly! Now tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent her that you're coming? Please, miss, depart from me. Oh my God. Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you! <laughs> Why, there's for you, and that, and that. Are all these people mad? a dream. But if it is a dream, then still let me sleep. Come, will you be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so and so be. Holy mother, holy mother, go to my lady! Out, devils, 
Be gone, minion! How you vex this man you have possessed? He speaks nothing but of ladies. Shame. Reverend, you do mistake me. Do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. I will deliver you from darkness. Re wait, Reverend, I'm not mad! Ugh. Oh, Festy, help me to a candle, ink, pen, and paper. As I'm a gentleman, I'll be thankful to you for it. Surprise, surprise. A rat in the cellar. Malvolio. Aye. Alas, sir. How came the steward to be aging with the wine? There was never a man so notoriously abused. Oh, well, I must go. But I'll return sometime. Later. No, wait, Bessie, don't go. Where are Antonio and Juliana? I could not find them at the inn. Their advice now might do me golden service. But here, my lady comes. If you mean well, come with me to see the holy man so that before him swear to me the full assurance of your faith, so my most doubtful and too jealous soul may live at peace. Madam, I'll go with you, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. May heaven so shine to fairly note this act of mine. <coughs> Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, has a greater pain for heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can abide the beating of so strong a passion. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What do you know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true as hard as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man. As it may be, were I a woman, I should, your lordship. What is her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment feed on her damasked cheek. Alone, she pined in thought, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? Died your sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not.
brings us to this morning, the feast of Twelfth Night. The Duke and Cesario, neither of whom had slept, were aroused early by the royal guardsmen. Your guardsmen approach, and here, sir, the man who rescued me. That face of his, I remember well. Noble Duke, this is that Antonio that plundered your coffers. We apprehended him brawling in the streets. He did me kindness, sir. Drew on my side. You saltwater thief! What foolish boldness brought you here? Orsino, noble sir, my husband confesses the theft. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, for whom sake did we expose ourselves into the dangers of this town? From the rude seas and reached and foamy mouth did we redeem him. A wreck past hope he was. His life we gave him, then drew to defend him when he was beset by villains. How can this be? When came you both ashore with this gentleman? Today, my lord, and for six days, both day and night, we may keep company aboard my ship. Lies! For this past week, this youth has tended upon me. Hold him in custody for his treacherous thievery. Cesario, how long will you keep me waiting? Madam. Gracious Olivia. Good morning, my lord. What do you say, Cesario? My lord may speak. My duty hushes me. If they be words to an old tune, they are as unwelcome to my ears as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. You uncivil lady, to you my soul has breathed out the most faithful offerings that devotion has ever tendered. What more do you want? What shall I do? What shall you do? Do what you always do. Do whatever pleases you. Cesario, where are you going? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than I love my life. More by all mores than I ever shall love wife. Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? Her husband? <gasps> I. Can he that deny? No, my lord, not I. You needn't be afraid of him anymore, Cesario. Go to the reverend, and he will tell you what has newly passed between this youth and me. Diablo! Assassino! Little stinker! There's my attacker! <laughs> Officer, arrest that man! What is the matter, Sir Andrew? He has broke my head across! Who has done this? The Count's gentleman, Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnated! Cesario! I did not hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I did not hurt you. You have hurt me. I think he cares nothing for my bloody noggin. Ow! Here comes Lady Tamara. She is my witness. You monster! To lay hands upon a defenseless woman, you beast! And I will ask you... And I would ask you to keep a civil tongue when addressing my husband. Your husband? My servant. Good lady, found at last. Oh! I'm sorry I was detained so long. Pardon me, sweet one, for the sake of the vows we made each other but a few hours ago. One face. One voice, one habit, and two persons. Antonio? Oh, my dear Antonio, how the hours have racked and tortured me since I lost you. Sebastian, how have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. I had a sister with the blind waves and surges devoured. What can you to me? What name? What parentage? Of Mesoline. Sebastian was my father. Such a Sebastian was my father too. Sebastian, my father had a scar upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered 13 years. Were you a woman, I would let my tears fall upon your cheek. I am Viola. 
I will take you to the captain by whose gentle help I was contracted to serve this noble duke. All my fortune since have been between this lady and this lord. Lady, you have been mistook. You would have been married to a maid. <laughs> You have said to me a thousand times, <coughs> you should never love a woman as you have loved me. And all those things I will overswear. <coughs> Give me your hand. Let me see you in your woman's attire. Bestie, give me a letter. Fabiana, please. Bestie, how is Malvolio? Is he recovered? I, madam. Surely he is the sanest and most gracious madman that you have ever locked within your cellars. What? I'm sure he explains it all in this letter he asked me to deliver. Open it. Read it. <laughs> this should be fun. The fool interprets the madman. <clears throat> By the Lord, madam. How now? Are you mad? No, madam, but I do read madness. Read it, girl. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness, and given your cruel aunt rule over me, yet I am as sane as your ladyship, the madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. That letter savors not much of madness. Fabiana, go fetch Malvolio. My lord, these things further thought on. Think of me as a sister rather than a wife. Good madam, I am most pleased to embrace your offer. And I am resolved that together we can celebrate our good fortunes with the people of this island. <laughs> Is this the madman? I, he. Lady, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? Lady, you have. Pray you, you must now not deny it is your hand. Tell me, why have you suffered me to be in prison, kept in a dark cellar, tormented by a madwoman? Tell me why, why, why? Malvolio, this is not my hand, though I must admit it is much like the character. But without a doubt, this is Maria's hand. <laughs> Maria? Shame on you! Help me up! Malvolio, you have been most notoriously abused. Alas, sir, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness rest upon them. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. <laughs> Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. Fair maiden, for the loving service you have given me, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister, you are she. My servant you were while you were a man, but now in other habits you are seen. Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. <laughs>
Illyria, jewel of the Caribbean. My name is Bessie, and my seaside bungalow provides a refreshing assortment of drinks made fresh from the fruits of our local farms. In the evenings, the casino, managed by the island's governor, Duke Orsino, offers the very finest in dining and entertainment. Olivia. I have sent declarations of my intentions, gifts, but she refuses them all without the courtesy of a response. How now, Valentine? What news from her? I regret, my lord, that I was not admitted, but the Countess do return with this answer. Island. 